Last week, Saudi Arabia stunned oil investors when they got OPEC to agree to a production cut total of 1.2 million barrels per day, their first attempt to control prices in eight years. The price of crude naturally surged on the news, and now it's sitting around $51 a barrel. However, OPEC ain't what it used to be. The world is glutted with crude thanks to the North American oil renaissance. And if the Saudis are cutting back, you got to wonder if the U.S. competitors will simply step up things. This is an important moment for oil, which is why I want to catch up with Rusty Brazil. He's the president and principal energy markets consultant for RBN Energy and author of the free rbnenergy.com website. That's my go-to source for data, analysis, and commentary about the oil patch. He's also the author of The Domino Effect, How the Shale Revolution is Transforming Energy Markets, Industries, and Economics. But most important, Rusty has an incredible track record. He's one of the few industry analysts to nail the lower for longer thesis on the way down. And he pretty much called the bottom the last time he came on in January, although he said energy prices would be range-bound after the bouncing off the lows. That's exactly what happened. So given this OPEC deal and the election of a very pro-oil president, has Rusty gotten more bullish or is this the moment where it would be wise to curb our enthusiasm? Let's find out. Mr. Brazil, welcome back to Mad Money. How are you, Rusty? Have a seat. Rusty, you're the only guy who got it right. I mean, we had a lot of guys on. And you're the only guy. You called the bottom and you said we'd be range-bound in this, in this area. Uh, new OPEC deal. Time to change our thinking or is it still what you said last time? Well, you know, it's a good thing for OPEC. They did the right thing. They had to do something. Okay. But there's holes in this deal. So although, you know, it's a good thing for OPEC, it's mostly about optics, I think. And really? Yeah. It's Even mostly. though you got Russia involved, that was a big deal. Yeah, Russia's involved. And they're not a member of OPEC. And therefore, they're on the honor system. Hmm. OK. And so that means if oil goes up a lot, I would like to think that there's an umbrella. I've been saying that you've been writing, RBN. Uh, that this gives a chance for the American companies, particularly in the Permian, to start pumping like mad. They, they are. They're, a, they're pumping like mad right now, all right? right? Uh, but I think the 1.2, 1 1.8, depending on how right. you want to call the numbers, I think that the Saudis probably had a building full of consultants tell them exactly the number that they needed to pick in order to be able to boost their revenue while not unleashing the beast. Okay. In other words, right at the line where maybe crude oil prices get back to right. 55, 58 bucks or so. Which is what they want. That's their sweet Which, spot. I think that's a sweet spot. And what the reason they want that is because they want that extra 10 bucks right. or so, but they do not want to create the economics that will have the United States increasing production by an additional 100,000 barrels a day every month that happens. And that's what was happening last okay. time. Okay. Now, what if I'm Iraq? What if I'm Iran? What are they doing? Well, they're going to try to optimize the situation right. as the best they can. So to the extent that they were able to boost their production in the October reference right. period, they may have tried to do that. We don't know for sure, but we think that's a distinct right. possibility. To the extent that they were going to do maintenance anyway, why not go ahead and do maintenance at the first part of next right. year, right? So there's all sorts of things that these companies can do to optimize the situation. And it's only, at least initially, a six-month deal. Okay, but well, why did everyone get caught short looking the wrong way here? Because they, 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 it's a head fake, right? right. They said they, they were going to do it, they didn't. They were going to do it, right. they didn't. They were going to do it, they didn't. Finally, they did it, and just the fear factor, again, it's the optics, just right. the fear factor was enough to take the short side of the market, and that's where you got the boost. But let's face it, right now, we're back down under 51 bucks. Right. And if you look at the forward curve, in 2021, the price is 56 that hasn't changed the whole. That's what you hasn't first told me to look at. You know, it was it was fifty five dollars. Fifty five when you told me it's last 56. Is 50, Well, that tells you more than anything. Now we have a president who is not about keeping fossil fuels in the ground. He's about getting them out, and he wants pipeline. I mean, if you listen to him, what you would think is he wants an American Renaissance in oil. But didn't we have one? We we did, and there's no doubt in my mind that with with Trump as president. The oil and gas industry is going to get things done. Okay. But that but, means that they but, can pump a lot of oil. But yeah, but even under the Obama administration, they got a lot of things done. They got so many things done that they crushed the price of oil and gas. Gee, now we're going to get more things done. Does that make you a little uncomfortable? Uh, well, you know, there's, in other words, it'd be a little <laughs> ironic. You have a Trump presidency, therefore makes us pump more, which then brings the price back down? Could happen, which would not be terribly good things for, for OPEC members, would it?
No. Isn't that would, ironic? It would be ironic. <laughs> now, tell me, we have a giant, because you spend a lot of time on pipes, too. We have a huge amount of natural gas in the wrong place. We've got it in Marcellus in Pennsylvania. We've got it in Utica in Ohio. Our pipes, I think you showed me something really interesting. Our pipes, even though you can't just reverse them because they're bigger at one end the other, do we need more pipe, and how does it work? Well, we need a few more pipes, okay. and there's a number of pipeline projects that are in the process of getting reversed right now. So they were flowing north and east. Now they're going to be flowing west and south. Tallgrass guys have got a project coming on right. like right now as we speak that's going to do some of that. So some of those, pro some of that gas, a lot of that gas is going to get back down into the southeast region, into Texas and Louisiana, and be exported in the form of LNG and going to Mexico that is increasing their demand for gas because their supply of gas is dropping. Okay, off. the important, 3.8 billion has been spent on the Dakota pipeline. Will we see that in our lifetime? That, will that pipeline work? Gee, I don't know. Uh, I kind of think that, that President Trump or, or President-elect Trump has said it's going to happen, so I think it's going to happen. And that's going to be good for, for producers and the Bakken. And it's probably good for all of us that buy gasoline from our, with our well, cars. Should we really care about the Permian? And we have enough pipes out of the Permian? We got enough crude oil pipes out of the Permian right now. Right. Gas makes me a little uncomfortable. I think I think we're going to need some pipelines for gas out well, of the Permian. You know, I'm I'm pro job. I'm yeah, pro we're going to build we're going right. to build pipes. I'm and, for I'm for all forms of energy, like every president ever says. How about know. that? All right, that's Russian Brazil. He's president and principal energy market consultant at RBN Energy. Go to rbnenergy.com if you want to be informed as we try to be, and he is. They have money's back there for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.